Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to season three of All About Canadian Books. Behind every book is a talented author and a great story. So that's what we're going to find out. Today, let's get to know author Brad Smith. Brad Smith is an internationally acclaimed award-winning novelist and screenwriter. He's written 14 novels and his latest is Copperhead Road, and it was published by At Bay Press. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Brad. Thanks for having me. It is my pleasure. So I, are you... I always enjoy talking to you. Aw, thank you. I enjoy talking to you, too. And I'm really going to enjoy your response to these questions that I'm firing out at you. Are you ready? Um, I think so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Bring it on. All right. When was your last, when was the last time you golfed? 24 hours ago. Your best score? My best score ever or this year? Best ever. score ever? Ever. Um, I think I shot 76 once. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. But I have not been shooting that this year. I'm more in the 80s this year. I was 84 <laughs> yesterday. That's all right. I would be happy with 84. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had a hole in one? Never. However, uh, a close friend of mine who I golf with quite frequently had a, do you know what an albatross is? No. An albatross is also a double eagle. Uh, his name is John Drynan Jr. And he had a, which he had a two on a par five about three weeks ago. Very and nice. I was, I got to stand there and witness it. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I bet there were some high fives after that. <laughs> high fives and cold beers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Brad, what was the best aspect of your childhood? Um, I think I, I, I grew up in a hamlet, but there was 100, 125 people, something like that. So I think all the stuff that I did in the rural areas, because a couple of my best friends lived on farms that were on the border of the of the, of the uh, village, and so just hanging out there, and we built forts in the hay mows, and we got fell into the creeks and the pond and collected frogs and stuff like that. And it was kind of a like a Huck Finn existence, you know. Yeah. And it was c compared to today, it was very very different than your typical five or six year old growing up, you know. But yeah, I really I really loved that that part of it, the the, the kind of rural part of my my childhood. Okay. You have a very diverse resume. Every anything from railway signalman, bartender, roofer, mechanic. Um, which job has had the greatest impact on you, not as a writer, but personally? Um, I built houses for several years with uh, a couple of brothers, the Volick brothers. And I really enjoyed I always compared writing a novel to building a new house <laughs> because you, you know, people say, how do you, book? how do you ever write a book? How can you ever write a book? And I just say, it's the same as building a house. You do so much every day for a period of three months or four months or something like that. And it's just step after step after step until it's done. So it, it doesn't seem daunting at all. Yeah. You know, to somebody who's never built a house before, they might say, well, I could never ever do that. But when you break it down into, you, you know, you put the floor joists on and then you put the floor on and then you put the walls up. Um, I, it's it's very it's a very similar feeling, and it's also a really nice feeling to accomplish something like that when you when you're done and you say okay we built a house and we built a very good house these guys had a, a great reputation for uh, for custom homes, so I, I yeah I would say building houses. Okay, so as a seasoned writer, you've got 14 novels under your belt. Which novel do you feel that you've inserted? the most of yourself into? Um, I, I've said in the past that my protagonists are, are usually a much better version of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think maybe there, there are a couple of guys that are kind of obstinate. So maybe, maybe I can see myself in there. I think Kid <laughs> Cooper might be, uh, yeah. Kid Cooper might be the closest. Um, this character in the new book, Bobby Barlow. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot there because I have some skills that I learned from my dad, 
with uh, cars, especially vintage cars. Like I, I couldn't fix a brand new car because I just opened the hood and I don't recognize anything under the hood. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but Bob, Bobby Barlow, there are some comparisons and parallels there as well. Of all your writing projects, which one had the greatest impact on your creative development? I think probably Busted Flush because the, the research was so extensive. Um, it's for, for people who don't know, it's, uh, it's a contemporary story about a guy who finds uh, glass, clay, glass plate negatives of Lincoln speaking at Gettysburg. And there's only one picture of Lincoln at Gettysburg. And it's, you can't even tell it's him. It's taken from 75 yards away. Um, and I was always really interested in this part of our society that's so interested in, in owning something that once belonged to somebody famous, you know, Marilyn Monroe's slippers or, yeah. you know, JFK's golf clubs, for instance, sold for over three quarters of a million dollars. And so when I started researching that, I, I think that's when I really learned how to research. I drove, I would jump in the car and drive to Gettysburg, which is about six hours from my house. And nowadays you can do so much on Google. For the last couple of books, um, I had to do more online research because of COVID, obviously. Um, but that was the book I think that, that really taught me how to research and how how refreshing the research is. The research is is more enjoyable than writing. I don't, no, nobody ever says, "Oh boy, I'm going to write today." You know, it's like I said earlier, it's a job. But the research part of it, and first of all, I'm not going to write a book about something I'm not interested in. Yeah. So when I, when I get into it, and I delve deeper and deeper. It, it, it makes it really interesting and just enjoyable. Okay. Now, I must confess, as a reader, while I was reading your book, um, Copper, Steve Earle's Copperhead Road song was playing over, over in my mind as I was reading. Was it in your head when you were writing it? No, no not at all, because that wasn't the title. Ah. Uh, the original title was Flags Hollow, which is the little hollow in the mountains. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Copperhead Road, I... People think I borrowed it from Steve, and that's kind of true, but Steve borrowed it from a real Copperhead Road. Like Copperhead is a, is a term for moonshine, and there actually are several Copperhead Roads in the U.S., especially in Appalachia, where moonshine was quite prevalent. Yeah. So, no, I, it wasn't in my head at all because I didn't know that was going to be the, the title. So after <laughs> yeah, the book was finished, yeah. yeah. Well, that but makes I have sense. Seen, I have seen Steve Earle in, in concert, and I saw him on his Copperhead Road um tour when it came out believe it or not he opened at uh canada's wonderland mm -hmm. he opened for bob dylan oh you're kidding yeah and steve earl wasn't like a household name at the time you know oh my goodness that is crazy yeah now i think i know the answer to this one but what is your favorite car i don't know if you do know that i don't know if i know the answer oh okay I have two vintage cars right now. I have a 68 Mustang Fastback and a 37 Ford Coupe. So it'd be like asking who your favorite child is. Maybe it might switch from <laughs> day to day. Yeah, yeah. So let's call it a draw. Okay. <laughs> who did you, what were you going to guess? The coupe? I thought you were going to say the, the Ford, like the orange one. I'm yeah. already, I'm already forgetting the name. <laughs> that's yeah, the that's, one. That's the Ford Coupe. So the coupe, the, Ford so the coupe. purpose of this interview with, yes, that's the Coupe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's, yeah, um, it's a pickup. And this is a very, very important question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Have you ever made moonshine? No, I haven't. I've tasted a lot of moonshine. <laughs> uh, I, I've never made any. And while we're on the subject of moonshine, can you please explain to our viewers the premise of Copperhead Road? Okay, and I just want to back up. I have made dandelion wine and rhubarb wine. Oh, okay. Dandelion wine is a lot of work and it's not worth it. Okay. <laughs> now that we've got that cleared up, that's good. Yes. 